Alan Marcus at the CIO Straight Talk Live event in New York City. He is a, a senior director and the head of the IT and telecommunications industry group at the World Economic Forum. Uh, just back from Davos and uh, a week of exciting exchange of in, uh, ideas there. Alan is uh, heading up uh, an industry and government, a global industry and government uh, group to try to tackle some of the issues around cybersecurity or uh, possibly a, a little more expansive term that I'll let him explain. Alan, earlier today you laid out a fairly grim picture of the threats that uh, we face. Talk a little bit about those threats and then what are a new approach or a new philosophy in addressing those threats. Well, Paul, um yeah, I guess it was more grim than I realized. I've been in this now maybe a little too long. So the first thing is that for the last 10, 15, maybe longer uh, years, people have been talking about cybersecurity. They've been talking about building walls and uh, securing their infrastructure, all great things and things that will have to continue in the future. The challenge is that the technology and the sophistication of those looking to get into this cyberspace uh, in a in a uh, illegal or or in sometimes a terroristic kind of way, um, are getting smarter as well, and so what's happening is these walls are not sufficient. They're important, they're required, but they're not sufficient uh, to stop uh, the attack. And it also turns out, as we're learning, that there are a lot more attacks happening than we're actually being reported. That was one of the interesting things to me. Tell me about that kind of order of magnitude of those tax attacks. That uh, surprised me when you cited some of those figures. So um, what uh, many studies have shown is uh, in this uh, last uh, 12 months, the number of attacks as reported have jumped 680 percent. Um, but it turns out, as, uh, uh, as people have done the research now, uh, that maybe only about 3 percent of the attacks are actually being reported. And so we're seeing this big number, one might say, oh, well, more being reported, but it turns out actually it's about the same, it's pretty consistent. And there are a number of challenges around that. Certainly from a pure legal standpoint, there may be uh, uh, liability if one's been attacked on, on what they have to their customers, to their shareholders, to their, uh, uh, even to their vendors and, and, and customers and so, and so on. Um, the other is reputation. A lot of people are quite afraid of being seen as the person who didn't protect uh, their network. So we're trying to change this discussion away from protection and security to resiliency. The recognition that you will be attacked, it's not going to be pleasant, but we can start to think in terms about how to build our business in a more digitally uh, resilient way and recognize that as attacks occur, the issue then becomes one of, am I going to survive it, which is how we talk today, to one of, I can survive it and still thrive. So in the future, the more resilient institutions are certainly going to have the ability to accept the attack and move forward. The ones that are not are going to be you know, taken out, if you, if you will, by this, uh, by this very uh, mischievous threat. You talked about the traditional um, reticence of companies, not surprisingly, to talk about it when they were attacked. That's your three percent number, in a way, because of a, a question, a challenge, you know, questions about their reputation or all kinds of things. One of the things that you're trying to do with your group at the World Economic Forum is to basically get uh, companies to come out of the closet in a way and talk about this threat so that collectively we can address it better, as I understood it. Talk a little bit about the uh, response of major multinationals and governments um, in um, basically recognizing and uh, talking publicly about the threat that we all face. Well, first, the recognition that one cannot solve this on their own. In so many circumstances, when one looks at their own company and thinks about the competitive environment, the last thing they want to do is share information, particularly with their competitors. But it turns out that people are starting to recognize, leaders are starting to recognize that they just can't solve this on their own. You can build a wall around your business, but how high are you going to build it? When does it become intrusive so you can't actually do business? 
So if your neighbors, that is the people you sell to, the people you buy from, your suppliers, mm -hmm. um, and your competitors in your marketplace, if you guys can uh, recognize that by working together, your ability to, to uh, control the threat, the ability to, to be better uh, prepared for such threats, uh, it creates a much different kind of atmosphere. So what we're doing is we're really reaching out to leaders and saying, you are responsible, but by working together, by practicing hygiene on your own, and by sharing the way in which we can protect each other, we can build a better digital space. When we look at any kind of industry, it's all going to be a digital business model. There's very few, if any, industries left that aren't going digital. Even the most traditional heavy manufacturers are becoming more and more digital. So we have to recognize that there's huge amounts of data, huge amounts of information that needs to be protected. And it's critical not just from an intellectual property standpoint, but it's critical because you become stewards of information on behalf of your customers and your suppliers. You have a responsibility to change the way in which you protect this information. And by coming together and sharing some of the challenges, by recognizing some of the threats and what an attack looks like, we're able to learn from that and better protect each other, much the same way we do in, in health. Once we learn about a particular disease, the more we share with each other what that looks like, the more likely it is we're going to create a, uh, an, a, uh, a solution to this, this threat. One of the points you made is that this is no longer a technology or an information technology issue, but it's a business issue and something that the, uh, in the case of a large company, that a C CEO needs to ris realize is a major business risk. What sort of advice do you give to people who are not CEOs? Uh, what can any of us do to try to play our small part in um, in, uh, in protecting uh, ourselves or our companies against this risk? Well, first, um, I just want to make one kind of point that might help there. Uh, you know, the, the world traditionally was a command and control kind of space. But because of social networking and other connectivity, we've moved from this sort of interconnected to this hyperconnected world. In the hyperconnected world, all of us have access to vast amounts of data and information. And we're learning that even leaders may not know everything that you know as an individual. So your ability to help you, your environment, your, your group that you work in, your company, your marketplace, your uh, geography uh, is much greater now than ever before because of the uh, access you have to information but also because of the influence you can create. So you as an individual, the first and foremost thing you can do is start to look around and say, are we doing the right thing? Are we doing the right thing for our suppliers? Are we doing the right thing for our business? Are we looking at the right business models? So let's think in terms of the digital space. Are we protecting ourselves right? You know, uh, one of the stories I told today, which is uh, one probably I'm sure I've heard from somewhere else, when you're running in the park, you don't put your wallet on the bench. Like That's just so obvious and intuitive. Socially, we've all come to understand that you just don't do that. Not because you necessarily live in a bad neighborhood, but because it just doesn't make a lot of sense. In the digital space, you have to think about the same things. Are you doing the right thing? Are you protecting your company's assets? Are you protecting the data that your company is the steward for? If so, that then, then you can uh, ensure that your company's doing the, the best practices around that. If not, ask the questions. Who is responsible? Who can uh, change some of these things? How can you work with your group? How can you work with your IT department? How can you ensure that management is grappling the magnitude of this of this threat to your business? One of your first uh um, uh, tasks, it seemed like as a group, is to raise awareness. And you certainly did mine today, uh, I'll be honest. Uh, and I, I suppose there's that evangelical quality to what you're doing, and that if we can all realize what uh, a pretty serious threat this is, not only to our own you know, laptop computer, but to our companies and our societies, uh, uh, I, I thought that was a worthwhile um, uh, starting point, at least in in raising awareness. What's uh, one? Uh, what's your view of the future? Is it a Cassandra-like view that uh, we'll all crash and uh, burn in our digital uh, digitally networked world, or will we figure out a way to uh, do something more than put up walls that ultimately will either stop us inter uh, interacting or uh, will be uh, torn down? Well, 
There are definitely two narratives in the, uh, in the market today. One is techtopia. The world is going to be this amazing, great thing. Technology is bringing untold new uh, economic prosperity. It's bringing a voice to the voiceless. It's bringing banking to the unbanked, mm -hmm. health to the unhealthy, and right. so on. Uh, and it's an amazing place that we live in. Um, and then the other side is the, the cybergeddon. The doomsday people, the people that are saying this is all uh, nasty, to what end, in fact, as one minister from India, in fact, as it turned out, said, to what end do we continue this technological direction? Um, and I don't know if I have an answer to that, but I do recognize that any time we make changes in the world, any time something new comes up, there are always those that are going to say this is not good. And they have very good reasons for that. And there are always going to be those that say this is the best thing ever. And they have very good reasons for that. What we need to recognize is it's the same narrative. There's two sides to the same coin. You know, in some languages, there's the notion of opportunity and risk. It's the same word, hmm. right? Because it's just two sides to the same coin. Yeah. And the idea is how do you find the balance? So there will be some negative things. We will make mistakes. It's going to happen. But the opportunity has got to outweigh that, that risk. And so as long as we stay and focus on that balance, I think we're going to be in very good shape. So I do think that there's some, a lot of optimism to be had, but I think we have to be realistic. And I think it starts with each of us first recognizing our role in this space, our role as a digital citizen in protecting the, our own information, but also protecting the information of those around us. Alan, an important message, and thank you for sharing it with us today. Appreciate your time. You're welcome. Thank you, Paul.